As we approach the 12 month anniversary of the Hypercube 3D printer, I think it's time to explore what other useful functions the Hypercube can be other than just 3D printing. And to facilitate that, we'll need to easily replace the tool on the X carriage, in this case the hot end, with other tools. So in this video, we're going to look at a redesigned X carriage and a redesigned E3D mount to make it easier to replace this with other tools. With the current E3D mount, it's not very simple to remove it from the X carriage. At the moment you can see, and I'll zoom in, you can see there is a screw hidden right behind here. In fact, there's four of them. There's one down there, one on this side, and then two up the top behind the, uh, behind the uh, radial cooling fan up here. So to be able to remove this hot end, we need to remove the fan, we need to remove the E3D head, we need to then remove the, uh, the cooling fan behind here to get access to those four screws and then unscrew the E3D uh, mount from the X carriage. So what we'll do here is we'll flip those screws around, we'll have the head of the screws coming in from the rear of the X carriage into the E3D mount. I'll replace the cavity uh, back here from a simple sphere to a hexagonal shape to, uh, to take an M3 nut. That will allow us to simply screw on and off the E3D mount from the rear of the carriage. And this entire assembly should, in theory, come away in one clean setup. Looking at the differences between the current X carriage and the new X carriage, the main difference is the four mounting screws which hold the E3D mount to the X carriage. Currently, the E3D mount uh, sits flush with the back of the X carriage. The screws enter through the E3D mount and then through the X carriage this way. The threads of the screws then appear at the back of the X carriage mount and we use an M3 nut to clamp them together. With the new X carriage, you can see there's now a cavity at the rear. That's to allow the screw to enter in this direction. So the head of the screw sinks into the X carriage. The thread of the screw then appears at the back of the X carriage and the E3D mount then slides over those screws. And within the E3D mount is where the nut or nut traps will sit. And that will then clamp this entire assembly together. Looking at the E3D mounts, the one on the left is the current E3D mount and the one on the right is the new E3D mount. And again, the main difference here is, is with the current one, you can see there's a cavity here to allow the head of the screw to slot in in this direction. The threads then poke through and then through the, uh, the current X carriage and then get clamped that way. But with the new E3D mount, you can see there's a nut trap or a hexagonal uh, gap to allow an M3 nut here. I have an M3 nylock nut inserted in here So that will then allow us to screw from the rear of the X carriage to clamp the uh, E3D mount to it I've also redesigned the way the Induction sensor mounts to the E3D mount currently. There's a nut trap uh, on this side to allow a single nut here we then have uh, our single induction mount which screws over the top. The problem with this design, it's been working for me but as some of you have found out with only having one screw here there is the possibility of this swiveling. If the induction sensor gets knocked it could potentially swivel and change your uh, zero home position. With the new E3D mount I've changed from a, a single mounting point to a dual mounting point and instead of screwing in uh, from the top and having the nut trap on the side you now screw in from the side and the, the two nut traps are now on the top. So there'll be a, uh, a new iteration of the uh, induction sensor mount as well, which will clamp onto the side of the E3D, uh, E3D mount. And this is a, a much more rigid uh, design than the previous and there's no chance of this swiveling if the induction sensor gets knocked. So let's bring this all together. This is the new X carriage, the new E3D mount and the new E3D sensor mount. To clamp all this together, you're going to need these fixings. To clamp the E3D mount to the X carriage, four M3 by 10 millimeter screws, and four M3 nylock nuts. To clamp the new sensor to the E3D mount, you're going to need two M3 by 10 millimeter screws, and two M3 hex nuts. The screws now attach via the rear of the X carriage, 
So they simply slot in like that. And with the E3D mount, you can see I've already pre-populated one of the nylock nuts uh, into this. So there's another few here to pop into there. I'll just screw in one for this example. So uh, here, you see I'm simply pushing that through and I'll grab my Phillips head screwdriver, screwing that in from the rear into the nylock nut at the top there. And that is one fixing point of four. You can see the thread doesn't pass right through the E3D mount. It's still a flat surface here and that needs to be flat because, well, on the top we have the, uh, the blower fan and on the bottom we have the fan duct sticking out. So these have to be flush with the top and using a 10 millimeter uh, M3 screw, you'll maintain the perfect length. And to attach the sensor mount to the E3D mount, simply uh, pre-populate the M3 nuts in the cavities, line up the sensor, M3 screw, screw that on, that is one, we'll have a second one there for two, and that is then a rock solid combination, and it's going to be easy to replace this entire assembly from the rear, you simply unscrew the four uh, screws, and that will allow this entire E3D uh, setup to simply pull away. The one downside with using nut traps within plastic pieces like this is these M3 nuts don't always have the same outer perimeter. They're always going to have an M3 thread within them, but the outside diameters may change. And that's going to affect uh, what nuts will actually fit into these pieces. I've had M3 hex nuts, for example, that range between 5.5 and 6 millimeters on the outer dimension. This particular one here is approximately 5.43 millimeters. And this nylock M3 nut is approximately 5.4 millimeters. So I've allowed up to uh, 5.5 millimeters for, for these nut trap locations. So just ensure if you're going to purchase uh, hex nuts or nylock nuts that the outer dimensions don't exceed 5.5 millimeters. These grey pieces are printed in PLA, specifically ESUM PLA Plus uh, PLA. I use PLA whenever I print test pieces like this because A it's cheap and B it just prints flat. I don't need to worry about warping. But the actual final uh, filament that I'll be using for my 3D printer is PETG. So here is, are the exact same parts as, as these ones here, except printed in orange, PETG, and I've already screwed this entire assembly together, as you can see. It's quite a nice orange, this one. So this will now attach to my X gantry rails, and that's what we'll do now. So I'll start by removing the E3D hot end from my current E3D mount. That should slide out the bottom. Yep. Remove the screw holding the fan to the top of the E3D mount. Cut the cable tie holding the loom to the X carriage. So that is now all isolated from the X gantry. The new X carriage is now installed on the X gantry. You'll notice I'm still using the old blue belt clamp and the grey uh, dual bushing holders. So I'm only using standard M3 nuts at the time being, not the nylock nuts here, as at some point I'll be replacing these three items with uh, the same orange as the X carriage. But you will also notice that I've removed the X end stop cable out of the loom. That is because Everything in the loom should be purely for that particular tool. Here it's the actual hot end, so everything else is in this loom. I've removed the uh, X end stop cable out of there. So I'll probably have a second smaller loom just for the X end stop, because the end stop's never going to come off the X gantry, of course. And that way it'll be easy to, to remove uh, this particular hot end while maintaining the X 
and stop functionality. I'm now ready to attach the new E3D mount to the X gantry. So that'll sit on the front like that. I've also already attached the induction sensor mount to the side of the E3D mount as you can see there. So for starters I'll grab some M3 by 10 millimeter screws. I'll first push one of those through And don't forget to install the fan duct before attaching the E3D hot end. Previously I was mounting the cable loom uh, to the X carriage via the mounting hole here with a cable tie. But as we're going to be able to remove the E3D mount separate to the X carriage, we don't want to do that anymore. So as part of the E3D mount, there's a small gap near where the fan mounts to the E3D mount to allow a 100 millimeter cable tie to fit through. That will also allow us to then mount the cable loom to the E3D mount as opposed to the X carriage. Everything is now mounted to the new E3D mount. The last thing I need to do is put some replacement loom around the X end stop cabling. I have quite a lot of the smaller uh, split loom here than the larger stuff. So I'll just cut some of this to length, the same length as this stuff. Probably use some Velcro ties to attach it to the existing loom. Anyone into RC probably has a bunch of these. These are just some Velcro ties. So they're reusable unlike cable ties. If I'm going to be replacing the head on the X carriage quite often then you want to use some form of reusable tie and why not something with velcro makes it easy to install simply latch on the larger loom to the smaller loom which just now contains the uh, X end stop cable and that simply wraps around nice and neat keeps them bunched together and that's what the finished E3D mount looks like if we scroll up you'll see the, the dual split looms coming away from there so now when I move this around, both looms move along with it. But the big test, let's now remove the four screws at the back of the E3D mount and let's see if this part can easily come away, leaving the rest of it. So I'm just going to move the X gantry forward and I'll unscrew it from the back. Start with one screw first. They're only 10 millimeters in length, so they won't take very long to come away. It's the first one, second one, the third one now, and the last screw. Move that back so you can see what's going on. It's now really loose, it's even starting to fall away, and there it is. Check that out. It's now come away in one piece, the E3D, the induction sensor, the blower fan, and all we need to do is separate, using these Velcro ties, the X-axis end stop cable from the loom. Do that now. Where is it there? I'll do this part of the tie. It's coming away. Take that off. Done. Separate. So that is one complete complete unit that you can move across to the side. I'll probably make another mount for this on the side of the printer. For example, it might sit on the outside but on one of the rails. That won't be too hard to do. But what we have in front of us here now is a bare X carriage with still the four screws sticking out for us to attach a new tool to the X carriage. Something like a pen, a laser cutter, a mill so we can engrave and do some very light duty milling maybe on on wood so the possibilities are quite endless and that's what I'll be exploring over the coming weeks to see what else we can actually do with the Hypercube 3D printer and just in hindsight now that we've removed the hot end from the printer the X 
end stop cable still needs to stay with the X gantry and that mounting hole that we used previously for the large loom we could potentially use just for the small loom. Grab another cable tie, stick one through there. Now I was going to remove that hole actually but I thought I'd keep it just in case I wanted to use it and during the video found a use for it. So now that's in. That can stay with the X carriage while the rest of this can be held off somewhere else. Having this entire assembly separate from the X carriage means that we could potentially build this entire section separate to the printer and then attach it uh, as a final step. That way you can ensure that everything is lined up correctly. You can test this uh, plugged into the electronics before having it plugged into or mounted to the X carriage. Just makes it all round easier. And in the reverse, to reattach the hot end, Let's slot that down, line up those mounting holes with the threads, stick them in a couple of millimetres and it just holds itself in place and get your Phillips head screwdriver out and screw them in one at a time. And there it is. Having the X-axis cable loom cable tied to the X-carriage means we no longer need to have a Velcro cable tied at the base. I've just installed one in the center and seems to move fairly freely. They're not coming uh, apart from each other. They're staying together. Cool.